All right, and we're back. How you doing? Good, good. How are you? Uh, fantastic. Oh. We've just recovered from the event this weekend. Did you recover like fully? I feel like, I feel like you haven't recovered. No, no, no. I I tried training yesterday. I could barely hit eighty percent of my numbers. I'll be honest. It was uh, it was it was something. It was <laughs> something. Uh, so if you don't know, uh, we just ran uh, our BCQ powerlifting meet number three, uh, third one in less than a year. Yeah. So uh, I wouldn't even count the first one. It was so small. I would, I would. It's, it's, right. it's, it's a good, it's a good starting off point, I think. Because even, right. even the first one was really good. Oh, the first one was fantastic. You know? it was, it was something. It was, it, it was a start. It's humble brag. It was memorable for me. I hit my first two hundred. So. Well, I still hum- remember that. Humble brag. I still so. remember that. We still have the footage of that. That was one of yeah. my favorite moments. So. Yeah. That's why it's, I think it's so. Lots of drama. Lots of drama. All right. Yeah. Well, well. Speaking of drama, mm. BCQ powerlifting meet three had some drama. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I mean, I mean, I, I uh, was, I was kind of way. I think for for day one, I went to watch, check it out. Uh, by the way, uh, just really quick, congratulations to all the athletes, actually to everyone, everyone who competed, who had the guts to even be on stage. Because I know a lot of people. Yeah, like, that's that. That takes a lot of man. Anyone uh, who yeah. says I lift in the gym and doesn't understand what it feels like to lift on on the platform, that's a totally different. Kudos feeling. to all the athletes. Yeah. I'm so proud of everyone. I'm so happy for everyone. Like you understand when 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 I'm handling the the the, the feed. Instagram feed, and I'm like really cheering people on. I'm not saying it just because I'm trying to be nice, mm. dude. It's it's big. It's big to understand that people come to perform to the limitations that their bodies and their minds would allow at the time, yeah. and then continue to go to the gym and try harder and harder and be consistent. It is so difficult to be consistent yeah. in this kind of training. It gets monotonous. It gets tough. It starts to hurt. It it you're putting yourself through so much. Uh, uh then then Edwards would be happy to say and to disrupt the homeostasis of the body <laughs> in order to cause adaptation. And you're putting it through all this and all this just to come to the platform and just leave it there. Yeah, It's huge. It's a big deal. It's big. Yeah, it's yeah. worth celebrating. So this was a celebration. Powerlifting Meet 3 was an absolute celebration yeah. for everyone. And I think everyone did a fantastic job. Um, if I was going to... There's, of course, every, every time we run one of these events, we know how to do it better the next time. Yeah. Definitely the awards dragged on a bit, and I will yeah, have a chat <laughs> with the people who are in this room who can hear me but are not on the feed. They're off camera. Yeah, they're off camera <laughs> about about uh, what the what the how should the awards should go next time. Giggling nervously. Yeah, and and of course, uh, thank you to Uridu who who throttled our feed Ooh. in the last three hours, so we had to find alternative meta- yeah. methods to screen it. <laughs> so yeah, we're so we're sorry about the sort of network corruption. So corruption, is it corruption? No, it's network. not corruption. It's not corruption. Network uh, disruption. 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 Yeah, we <laughs> used disruption twice in the last three uh, in the last paragraph. I really? used yeah, look at you. There you go. Big words. Big words. You're trying Big to words. insult me. <laughs> 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 so, but yeah. So, but uh, I think I think the video is up on the BCQ YouTube page, so you can definitely check out your uh, your lifts. And mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. that was uh, that was one. Uh, we had YouTube, of course, flag us for the music we were using. The mics yeah. were picking up the music, so uh, they flagged us on uh, a that couple was of tough. songs. Yeah. So we went back, muted the songs, and re-uploaded the video. That was okay. Uh, all the photos have come in, and we've issued the links to the athletes, or we're issuing the links to the athletes very soon, mm. so that they can get the, this incredibly huge photo dump. Uh, Dino, who is brilliant. Yeah? yeah. And, of course, we have uh, a little montage that's coming up, hopefully mm. uh, to this uh, also this kid that came up and said, hey, I want to shoot this. This is the guy who filmed Snippet 1? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I was waiting for Snippet Day 2. So, so he, he basically saw the event and said this is the best thing he's ever been to in his life. Really? The, the feeling, the emotion. Damn. Yeah, yeah, and he's been to things. Let's put it that way. But he said the feeling, the emotion, the raw, the raw celebration was so incredible. That he's not just gonna do a snippet; he's gonna do a full montage, okay. and and have a specific person uh, voice over it. Ooh! Oh yeah, the the the, the uh, announcing our voice our of uh, our event. Our Bruce Buffer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The our very uh, welcome to the stage. Yeah, that guy. <laughs> Remember that guy? <laughs> Roasting him a little hard before. Who the couldn't last get a before. name right? <laughs> ah, welcome to the stage. Ho, ho. I told you get a mic. Defend yourself. <laughs> you didn't want to. Look, he's wearing it. But no, that's that's great. I think it's awesome. Um, and speaking of raw emotion, like I. Being there and participating, I just want to like stress on how it hit. Yeah. Like the m- the men, forget the, the the heaviness of the weight and the actual pressure of being on stage. The the mental drive, being in the warm up area, getting ready to go on stage. H- how was uh how were your nerves before getting not, to warm ups? Not uh, very unsteady. So how how were you before weigh ins? Before weigh ins, it was very calm. 
funny enough, I was very relaxed. I had a like thank thankfully uh, my good friend Argus, yeah, Sid, yeah, who was nice enough and kind enough to be my coach slash handler on the day. And if it wasn't for him, I would have been all over the place. Even during warm up, during lifts, he was there trying to like calm me down. And that's I think it's, it's good excellent, to have excellent. that. And I, I don't think we explained the. I importance. think that worked out a lot, very well. I mean, I mean, uh, having a handler uh, while you're in a powerlifting meet really does make a difference. It does make a huge man. Difference. Notice, notice, um, Tarek. Yeah, Tarek, Tarek. Shout out to Tarek for uh, uh, Coach Tarek. He's actually one, also the one of the guys. It was him and yeah. Sid who kind of like. I gotta say, like. I know that he wanted to be involved in the organization. I was keeping him out of the organization as much as possible because I know his athletes need a coach. I think, and I think that worked role. out very yes. well uh, for him and his team and for everyone. I mean, one of his one of his one of his athletes, uh, Gibran. Yeah, he got fir- he got first in his division. Yes, it is in, in his sub his sub junior division. Another of his athletes, Abdullah Saad, one Abdullah of the one of go. fives. One of five. There you and go. he finally broke the three ten barrier. He missed it twice. So I'm so uh, proud of him, dude. Yeah, I'm, I know that kid. Yeah, strong, strong guy. Both them, uh, mm. JB Abdullah. I could probably list you know. all his athletes, and I gotta say, it wasn't just his athletes. It was Chris Boulis. He stepped up and helped oh, him. Uh, Diouf, yeah. he stepped up and helped you. Uh, Badr Rula. I could start listing all the Azani. It's everyone. It, it's it, the, the list. I mean, for me, is so long. It's yeah. hard to list everyone, but everyone and, and, they, and I, you know who. I'm, I'll talk to you, and you know exactly who I'm talking about. Like without them there supporting me. Yeah. I probably wouldn't have gone through that like that. So, so for me, for me, uh, trying to provide this platform for people um, to be able to perform, also, of course, puts pressure on themselves to come in and bring someone with them. Yeah. So you bring someone with you, it makes a difference. If you're alone, handling nerves is, is something else. It's something else. I think the only person whom I saw there pretty much alone handling his nerves was was the absolute monster of a human being, Hashem Adham Abu Faisal, the guy with the. 350 kilo squat and the 200 something bench and the yeah yeah the, uh, the, yeah the yellow shirt yellow the shirt the incredible incredible so I, I, plus I saw him I saw him in the warm he, me and him were in the same uh, yeah. warm area in the same flight yeah shout out to this guy incredible this human being incredible fantastic human being. gentle giant right yeah 100%. but so calm I'm telling you in before the, the competition in the in the in the warm up area yeah I saw his sort of um, I noticed it it's it's very to himself, headphones on. He had two handlers who didn't speak to him. All they did was change his weights. Yeah, which I think is great, by the way. If you have people helping you change weights, which helps you be less fatigued and just it wasn't two phones. handlers. It, it was, was one hander, but the other hander was shared with the rest of the team. Yeah, because yeah, there was other people other, from yeah. the. Uh, but they were like that. He was nice enough. That that guy was nice enough to come and like. Yeah. You know, but that gentleman, all he did was sit, headphones on, laser focus. Yeah. I'm serious. Yep. Like. It's it's um, he wasn't mean or anything, but he was doing it on purpose. And I think we should all follow that method. Yeah. He wasn't making eye contact with anyone. No, no, no. He he's not there to prove anything to anyone. He's exactly. there to, to complete his lift. Exactly. Everybody can talk. Oh yeah, yeah. But then you come in and you do your part, and when you do your part, you do it right. That's the it right way to do it. Speaks for itself. Exactly. You see how the crowd reacted oh to his God. lift. Yeah. Dude, the place went nuts. They could hear what us a mile what away. Was squat open? I was I, I was more interested in a squat opening than. Man, I was so scared. I was so scared because I don't think a, a heavier weight has been squatted in the whole region. Yeah. So when the bar was loaded at 350 kgs in the end, and he's the only one that has his settings in. Did you notice that? Yeah. He puts the settings in because, mashallah, his shoulders are so wide and the the arms have to go out to be able to put rack that bar comfortably. He has, he has to, he has to, yeah, yeah, I noticed. And when he walked it out, there wasn't much of a struggle in the walk. I was like, oh, dude, that's 350 kilos on his back. That would break a person. Like, mm-hmm. that would break a person in half. Um, he steps out, he walks back, puts that bar. Like, I've seen this on Instagram. You see it in competitions. You see it on the stage in the IPF. You see it in the U.S. powerlifting. You don't see it very often. Mm. Uh, a 780 pound, or was it, no, 700? No, 660 and 100. Let, let Lou figure that out. No, no, no. <laughs> no, please don't. <laughs> Love you, buddy. Uh, just kidding. Uh, 770 pound uh, squat. Yeah. Racks it, and then he's comfortable, and I'm looking at the loaders and the spotters. And I'm, all I'm, I'm focusing on the loaders and the spotters. And the dude doesn't falter. It's perfect. Speed all the way down, speed all the way up, and the place goes nuts. Probably one of the scariest ones was when he stared at me when I had to get the red flag for that last deadlift. 
Because you got to wrestle. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I didn't notice what happened. What yeah, was it was, was to me, from that angle, it looked like a bit of a soft lock out. It was mm. a pretty close call, but I had to call it the way I saw it. Okay. Uh, I hope, was, I it hope no one was it the shoulders? or? What no, it, 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 to me, it looked like he, uh, uh, the, the, the little knee hip back and the shoulders were slightly over. Okay. Like he needed to push his hips forward a little more to get that lock out. Remember mm. that uh, this is Oliveira's uh, deadlift that yep. I showed you? It was very close to okay. it. Okay. Was I was going to say, w- the, the judging process for you, how was that? Uh, this was ridiculously complex this time. Uh, one of our struggled? judges, who is Sid, uh, who became a recent dad, so we have to train up a team. Uh-huh. Uh, so shout out to Sid and, and baby Adam mm. and the whole family. Uh, so we trained up a whole team. Mm. No matter how good you are at refing, mm. no matter how good, we're all humans. And this is a very close call. Calling it depth or not depth is, is a millisecond. It's not. Uh, it's not. Uh, I- if you could take a camera, you could start forwarding. You could miss it. Yeah. Calling a lockout and not lockout. A hitch is clear. All that's clear. So there was bound to be mistakes. But I think the mistakes were minimal. I could clearly remember three, maybe four mistakes in refing. Okay. One of them was I wish I could have overruled, mm-hmm. uh, but I was side ref at that time. In all cases, it was pretty good overall and had pretty much no impact on the final result. Mm-hmm. I had to go through the final result. I have overruled. Two calls. Okay. One of them because the side refs had had uh, given reds on a perfectly good deadlift, and they're mm-hmm. they're refs in training, and I was the head ref at that time, so I made the call to overrule. Then we had a uh, a gentleman from Bahrain, one of the handlers for Abu Faisal actually, came up to me uh, after the lift because the discussion was when he bench pressed. Mm-hmm. Now, the other side ref called it on a foot move. I didn't see the foot move. On, I your, called on your side? Yeah, from my okay. side, I saw the bar touch the rack. Uh, and I okay. called it touch the rack. So one of the, si- one of the uh, handlers came up, and we had a full-on discussion. A very, very – I respect him. I, I don't remember his name, but fantastic guy. Comes up and shows. We go through the rules. We study the rules, and we see that the IPF rule statement is if, it, if you use the rack to assist. Oh, it's not just bump or graze. It doesn't matter to bump or graze. It's if you kind of push against it, for example. Okay. So it just grazed. And the call is quite clear. If it's just mm. grazed, you can actually give a white flag. So that's going to change in our, in our approach. It's not just touch the rack. If it's using the rack to assist in the mm. lift. Uh, so there will definitely be uh, a thorough study of what we will include in terms of the rules of how we... I was going to say, how, how are you going to approach the next one in terms of like... We try to stay as close to the book as possible. Mm-hmm. However, mm-hmm. for the big event that we haven't, you know, let out as a secret yet, uh, which no one knows, but everybody knows, yeah. uh, we're going to have a jury because there's a lot of money on the line. Okay. And because there's a lot of money on the line, you kind of have a jury. And we're going to give each lifter two, two challenges. Okay. Right? Not 10, not 20. You can't challenge every lift. I hope I don't have to challenge every lift. That'll be a lot of red flags. Yeah. But we're going to give every lifter and their coach two challenges. And if they want to challenge a call and the challenge is correct, mm-hmm. then they keep the challenge. If, the, if they, if they want to make the call and, and the challenge is wrong, they lose the challenge. Okay. So that way we can control time. So uh, we're definitely upping our refing game. We're running a few refing workshops so that we can keep this uh, going. We're building the sport. Again, there isn't many people here who could yeah. ref. But it's good. I mean, hopefully with the with the big one, we'll get some volunteers from overseas also, and we'll be able to do something in that manner to grow it. Yeah. So that that's that's the refing part. Now, things that happened along the way that were really interesting, mm. uh, other than the fantastic lifts, because there were some things, some moments there, like they were just insane. Mm. Knowing knowing their trade, like Chris Woolis's 260 kg squat. Oh that's 20 20 kilos heavier tra- than anything I he did in training. I trained with Chris Woolis. Yeah. Which is I would consider him a training partner because yep. we were always there in the gym at the same time. Um, and we talked strategy. Yep. And uh, I remember at the time he kept saying, um, I, I told him, find a handler to find. Like that was my thing to him. Yep. And I was like, okay, well, just in case, what's your numbers? What are you going to do? And he had the 260 in mind. He had that number in mind. I personally wanted him to hit 300 deadlift. No, I think it was still a little far. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. The 280 moved great. But because he's really such well. an explosive athlete, mm. uh, if he comes up off the ground slow, I, I don't think he'll be able to receive it above the knee as well as possible. Oh, okay. Uh, so you kind of have to coach people to the nature of their lifts. Some people are really explosive in the squat. They bounce right off the bottom. Like mm-hmm. uh, if you saw Muhammad Al-Yahyouh, it was probably the fastest drop. He dropped it like it's hot, by the way. <laughs> he drops it like it's hot. <laughs> so uh, Muhammad Al-Yahyouh is an absolute rock star. Mm. Uh, shout out to him for showing up to compete. 
Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. No, he, he did. He, he actually got, uh, I think it was, um, I'm trying to remember if it was bronze or silver mm. uh, in the weight class. But his, his lifts were beautiful. His squat, he dropped so fast that the loaders had a problem. Keep keep yeah, oh wow, like okay. going down with them. It, the, he, they would touch the bar. And he just bounced out the bottom. So for someone like him, if he were to add another five kilos, maybe he wouldn't be able to bounce out and oh he wouldn't okay. be able to come up. And then you have the people who just muscle through it, who are just strong. And those people, you can add weight. Uh, Look, that's Chris Bulos, like one of those guys. When squ- especially with squatting. Explosive. Not explosive he is so squat, explosive. Yeah. So you really don't know the limit. It, mm-hmm. it, it deceives you. It'll be great. It'll look like an RPE 7, and then you add 5 kilos, and it's not possible. That's me with bench. <laughs> that's me with bench. Yeah, we'll talk about your bench uh, oh some God. other time. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's one thing. I that's I four I days a week for you now. Have you, have you noticed I didn't do a third attempt? Yes, yeah. I know, but I'm, I'm happy with that. You're happy with that? Yes, I did. I, I don't know if we're, uh, we, can, we, we can discuss this because now we're post yeah. post uh, competition. I'm happy with that because the idea of trying to go overboard during competition, mm. not knowing whether or not, like, you knew you had the 130. Mm. You didn't know you had a 132. That's, right? that's and, where and my mind... you knew you weren't going to hit top three on the day. Yeah. And you want to stay safe, and you want to keep building till the next one. I got I got some good advice from uh, Coach Bob Bus. Shout yep. out. And I just like. By like the way, Bob Bus is primarily the reason that we can have this discussion, and, oh and yeah, we are yeah. able to grow this because <laughs> that guy. Shout out. Seriously. Yeah, showing up last time, showing up this time, showing up every time is really building the sport. Yeah, I think it's great because the more he shows up with his team, I think the more the the region starts to notice. Yes, us yes. And this is what we want. Yeah. Right? But I really respected his advice because it was really good. It was a mental thing. He's like, I, th- oh, I, I was me, it was me, Sid, and Bada, and we just discussed it. Do I go 135? Do I stop? And I was like, I think I should stop. I think I should stop. And then I'm like, Bob Bus, quick question. Should I go 135? He's like, what did you decide? I'm like, I don't think I'm gonna, like, see, see right there? I don't think. Done. You're not going to lift it. If you don't have it set in your mind, then you're not going to get you're it. You're not going to get it. He's like, advice, don't go. If you if it's not here, there's literally no point in even attempting it. It's good advice, and I was like, you know what? Beautiful. Yeah, Guys, it's a very good, uh, very good piece down. of advice. Yeah, and I and, and and I mean, I'm not saying it helped my deadlift because I was hoping to get 310 and I failed 310. But I think that was my own sort of that was my fault for going. 290 went up f- fine. There yeah, was, uh, apologies on that red flag. I couldn't give you a white flag for that. No, no, no I, I, I actually, so I actually want to. Uh-huh, uh-huh. re- there isn't <laughs> a chance in hell you were getting a white flag for that. Do it, okay, but it was like. Hey, man, you. How listen. did you catch it? Because I was looking at the video. It was this. It was more of a. Mm, you went up, down, up, down, up. Yep. It was really. I was like, this is really. You went to lockout, but didn't hold your I, lockout. I, I locked it out again. Yeah, you went to lockout, mm. dipping back. It was a just lot that of people were like, "What? How's I'm like, I don't know." And I, I didn't argue. It's a red flag. It's a red flag. But then 300 felt great. Okay, my mistake was going 310 instead of 305. Uh, I don't know if it's a mistake. I don't know if it's a mistake. If we were looking for a PR, you already have 305. We've done that before. Yeah. If we were looking at new PR, I would say 310 was the right choice. 310 was the right missed choice. it or not. I would say 310 is the right choice. The previous comp, I got it, but it was horrible form even i knew yeah i'm not i'm not worried about that now now we focus on our training building up forward and moving down to the weight class hopefully with amore uh bigger amore meals you'll get yourself uh, amore meals shout out my god yeah they're filling me up i'm loving it by the way so uh, let's see how much you're on the scale this friday and we'll talk about that if i gain weight then yeah well we'll 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 have a chat with the owners i'm not on the bike no i'm I'm not on the bike enough i'm just like sitting and eating No, no no i'm not worried about that you know mind you this is the first week where i'm not in full training and I yeah you shouldn't be next week you know, we start next again week, yeah so i think this way it doesn't really count i f- you have to wait till the next week when we talk about it then yeah plus i promised my friend i'd have his fried chicken he's missing fried chicken on friday he's way up before the fried chicken <laughs> i will i promise all right that being said mm. uh it was a great day it was, awesome. it was a great two days it was a great celebration so many new faces so many great lifts 15 year old girl smashed her numbers has a 350 wilt uh, Arwa Hassan was like, wow. Yeah. Fahed, who was a sub junior yeah. champ, pulls a 250 out of the bag uh, after being sick. And after he was going sick to Umrah. And, and he lost, I don't know, three kilos. Most and of and I don't know how, how these guys come up. Dude, Hassan Al Misri yeah. in, the, in the 120 class. Like, I saw his, his training lifts. They're fantastic. It, like, in training, I can't, I'm trying to remember that lift. I was like, wow, this guy is genuinely a superman. Mm. Gets sick. Gets the flu, loses six kilos, drives down 12 hours. I'm like, when I saw his post of the route and it says 10 hours, I'm like, I hope you take a lot of breaks and stretch your legs. 
guy's a giant. Uh, mashallah. Uh, uh, funny enough, and he shows up, down six kilos, had the flu, issues with the hotel, won't discuss that, uh, and 12-hour yeah. and drive, and still managed to do what he did. Wow. Like, every time I look at these guys and I look at what you guys are doing, it's absolutely fantastic. Yeah? The one I really felt bad for was a gentleman who was uh, coming down from Saudi. Junior. Mm. Really strong. Really, really strong. Driving down. Car breaks down. Oh. Yeah. Car breaks down. Gets a trailer to pick him up. I'm on, I'm on like, you know, we're, we're chatting along the way. It's like, I don't know if I can make it in time. Mm. Gets, gets the car on a trailer. Trailer brings him to Doha about two hours before the competition. And, and, and because of that, he couldn't cut. He couldn't do his, his cut the day before yeah, or anything. Yeah. And he was four kilos overweight. Uh, so he didn't get a chance. I mean, he's not going to get a chance to. He would. He, he would have medaled. He would have been number one, yeah. but he doesn't get a chance to medal because of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll still mention these guys lifting, but and we won't be able to put them in the order. But shout out to Haidar for for actually making he it and lifting. Yeah. And he could he could definitely lift. Yeah. Uh, speak and then on that point, the one thing I gotta say, it's in terms of compliance. Is it five? Five athletes didn't make weight? Yeah? I think it was five really? athletes. Yeah, five athletes that didn't make weight. I had this feeling that everyone made weight. I don't know why. Maybe because I'm no, oblivious. No, no, no. We, we had five athletes that didn't make weight. I've heard all the reasons. Okay. So the one, the drive down, which I know because I've been, you know, yeah, on the phone with them. I had the, oh, I thought it was this weight and over. I won't mention who that was. Okay. And then it was, oh, I thought it was, you know, you're, it's okay if you're a couple of hundred grams above. Oh, okay. Uh, I, you know, the okay thing. And we're, we're, we're trying to set rules that apply to everyone, and we want everyone to comply because we want it to be as fair as possible for everyone. We've had tempers. <sighs> Unfortunately, we had uh, three drop bars yeah, I in saw this those. competition yeah, uh, to led to uh, hurting Probably. one of the uh, loaders. Oh, but yeah? he's okay. He's okay. It was okay. just a bruise on the bicep. Uh, yeah, unfortunate. And, and it's... it's um, we're gonna we're gonna sanction maybe some of the athletes for these actions. Mm -hmm. um, we'll have to see what the actions are. We're we're setting up a committee to decide what's best because I want my loaders. I mean, these guys did a fantastic job. I want them to be safe. Uh, mm -hmm. You don't it just doesn't. It's not a contact sport. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. They're here to they're here to sort of help the athlete not hurt himself, but at the same time. That doesn't give the athlete an excuse for like, oh, I can drop the bar. Yeah, yeah. I, I know we're rambling and we're just going through the things uh, <laughs> that, that we saw in the event. But everything that's popping to mind, I'm dropping because there's so many things that happened. No. We wouldn't be able to cover it in two or three hours. Huh? Uh, said there was some drama, but I don't know if it was like. Well, uh, the, the biggest drama for me was the bars. Okay, yeah. That's uh, that's the second that's biggest that's drama was, was tempers flaring. And, and was it to do with the, like, people thought the call was wrong? or was So that wrong calls. The, the and the other one that was at that had a major effect was the baby powder thing. So yeah. baby powder was yep. all over the place, and people's shoes were starting to slip. Yeah. So we're going to do, and I, I got some good advice on this, we're going to create a baby powder square so that we avoid having baby powder everywhere, and we'll put a wet towel for people to step on, and then they could wipe them so they could go on the stage. So we had people whose shoes weren't giving a lot of traction so on, uh, on the, on the, on the, on the, the bench. bench. So I'm, I'm, I can sort of vouch for the whole baby powder thing. I personally use baby powder, but I try to pick a corner – where no one's gonna step, and that's why I be, that's why I powder up. Big thigh problems. <laughs> yeah, mm. you know, but that's that's I think the best advice if you feel like you have to even in training, like I'll pick a corner where no one walks there. Yeah, yeah. It, it does affect your lift, you know. It's so that being said, I think that's one thing we'll have to manage better next time yeah. for sure. Um, so uh, tempers will flare. Tempers will flare because a bad call. Tempers mm. will flare because I think it's a bad call. Tempers mm. will flare because of a missed lift. Um, things happen. Mm -hmm. um, we have to be, yes, accommodating, but at the same time, we have to ins enforce the same rule on everyone else. Be fair. Yeah, it's because, dude, there's there's friends. Every I consider everyone who's competed a friend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but there's yeah, need, uh, but I can't be, I can't have any favorites. Uh, I have to be as as impartial as possible to to everyone. I have to, if I'm wrong, I gotta be wrong with everyone. If I'm yeah, right, I've course. gotta be right with everyone. Yeah. That way, you ensure the same. Homogeneity, if we, if I use that's a big word. Yeah, I know. I don't know if you're trying to insult me or. I don't know, man. <laughs> I, I think I need I need to tone it down. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But no, I guess that's totally fair and that's totally understandable because in this sport where b before the event starts, everyone's friendly and all that, it's 
in the end, it's it's a competition. competition. So, this is where, like, I'd like to keep it. I'd like to keep the statement today. After going over all the fun stuff that happened and the bad stuff that happened, and it wasn't bad stuff. Well, the things that, that like, little tense moments that tense we all moments, have. Tense moments, yeah, but that, I feel like that's, I mean, that's human nature. But as long as the people who create that tensity or whatever, yeah. that don't go overboard, yeah. you know, that's so fair. At the same time, we, we really do take constructive uh, criticism mm. I don't, uh, well, like we do. We Every time we want to do better. So... For the big money competition that's coming up, um, in terms of elevating uh, our game, I'm definitely introducing a jury, okay. specifically for that size of competition, because there's just too much on the line yeah. for there not to be a jury. That way we can have uh, we can have everyone, because dude, the people that showed up, I mean, last competition we were blown away by the gorillas team. Yeah. And then we saw the gorillas team and the grip team, and there was the, the busakhers, uh, like these guys, men. Like I thought, Chris was lifting heavy in his weight class, and then you saw Muhammad busakhir, and it was it was insane. Two seventy squat, two ninety deadlift. I feel like we need to up, like everyone has a little seat. We need to up our team. Uh, so I like I hope that 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 you know? that uh, not our team because I can't be our I team. Know, I'm impartial. Your team. My team. I don't yeah. know. I, I gotta I gotta I gotta work on like. Yeah, uh, well, well like I said, so a Qatar team needs to show up. Should I? And should but I but Jabir, uh, Jabir Adil, uh, Mahdi Busakhir, Muhammad Busakhir, uh, the juniors that showed up. Um, uh, who was it? Ali Hussein. It was Daeed uh, Shimari. Uh, Muhammad Al Qattan, dude, I love this guy. Muhammad Al Qattan is one of my favorite guys in this competition. He works so hard. He shows up every time. Has pretty cool montages. If you see his reels, they're very cool. Uh, yeah. And I swear he could set, uh, set a record uh, the way he's moving. Mm. Yeah? Uh, he competes up to 59. Uh, then I saw Ali Al Khayya. Uh, like, I could start naming everyone. Yeah? I could, start, I could literally remember everybody's name in that competition and tell you what they lifted and how they lifted. That's how well they performed. Yeah? Everybody was bringing their A game. Everybody was lifting. It was a very happy celebration of lift. In spite of any little thingies here, uh, you know, here or there those we have the onus is on us to make it better yeah. so that the next competition <coughs> when you the Qatar team decide to bring it I want to bring it yeah uh, everybody else is bringing with it with respect to Rabbas and Grip yeah I'm going to bring it <laughs> this is a friendly competition that's all <laughs> I'm going to bring it it's uh, I, I don't know about friendly <laughs> I, mean, you know, I don't know about friendly being friendly you know no no you're I'm being friendly I'm being I don't <laughs> know if everybody else is going to be friendly there is like I said there is I realize I don't have a full. I realize myself. I'm not. I mean, maybe I am. I, I think you know what? I lied. I am naturally competitive because at the end of that day, I was seriously down. You saw me. I was yes, I yes, I saw seriously you. down in the dumps. But I told you this before. This I I looked at this from two perspectives. One part as um, like working in BCQ and looking at the event as bird's eye view and saying, this is amazing. This is amazing. This is awesome. This is awesome. And then coming back down to the athlete, I didn't do as well as I wanted to do. So it's like mixed emotions. You know what I mean? On that note, the same thing I ask of everyone is what I'll ask for you. Do better. Do better. Elevate your game. Yeah. Elevate your training. Elevate your standard. Shoot high. It's okay. You'll miss sometimes. But sometimes you'll hit. And those the, those are the ones that matter. Yeah. Okay? Like even if I realize even if I didn't platform, if I'm like if I PR'd all my 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 uh You PR'd your squat by how much? Uh old by 15, 15 kg. Yeah. 230 was the That's first. That's four months ago. Yeah. Wow. And you jumped it by 15 kgs. And it looked better than your 230 then. It, yeah. So, congratulations. Thank you. Uh? Thank you. That's, I'll take that as a win. And That's a huge win. See, yeah. Um, that being said, how are we on the clock? We got to call it. Yeah. You want to hit a conclusion? This is, yeah. Um, honestly, my conclusion is thanks to everyone who participated in the meet congratulations to everyone not just the people who won everyone because i think just coming in flying from or driving or driving or driving god like seriously yep. kudos yeah coming in competing that's you, you just won so congratulations to everyone i hope everyone trains hard stays safe and uh see you in the next one yeah um like ahmed said big shout out to the athletes yeah. huge shout out to the athletes and their support teams 
a huge shout out to all the organizers, volunteers, especially, especially the ladies. Yeah. I'm not forgetting everyone else. Thank you to all the marshals and all the technical officials that helped make this happen. But those loaders, they suffered. I kept telling the Cl Cl Clifford. Yeah. Yeah. You got me. You got me. I got you. Everyone's yeah, like, you got yeah, me. Dude, you got yeah, me. Yeah, I don't know about that. I got you. He keeps looking at me and say, I got you. <laughs> no, because I, I told him when I you, when started you, to worry about when you, that. When, I you, got when you. you hand me the bar, like, just, you know, make sure you do it right. And like, you know, because I get worried a lot. Know? Yeah, I know. Everybody, everybody worries about the handoff. Yeah. Uh, he's been doing it so much right now. I need people to worry less. I think you, you did a gr I, personally. Yeah. You did a good job. So, so a uh, huge shout out oh, again. Kaylee, thank you. Uh, I was gonna go there. <laughs> Kaylee, Kaylee, who pretty much me. saved all the athletes. Uh, can't thank her enough. Uh, she was literally acting as medical personnel on that day, 100%. releasing grips, fixing legs. It was, it was, it was fantastic what she'd done. Yeah. A huge shout out to all the sponsors that came up yep. and provided. All the <laughs> all all the money and the prizes that we got, yeah. Eleco, Force, uh, Oakberry, uh, Approve Market, Brands, yeah. uh, Bravery. I think I I didn't forget anyone, did I? No, I didn't forget anyone. Uh, that that covers DJ for some cool tunes. No, uh, DJ. Uh, uh, no, I said Force. Oh, uh, yeah. Force? So man, how am I gonna forget Force? Yeah. <laughs> 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 you should you, you should listen more. It's not uh, like it's behind <laughs> you, right? No, no. <laughs> so. This is not a subliminal message. <laughs> no. All right. Um, and, of course, a, a huge shout-out to Strombox for letting us host it there. Yeah. yeah, take two days out of their incredibly busy schedule in the middle of the open yeah. and let us take Seriously. over their gym. So uh, it's it's fantastic. Uh, everything that happened happened so well that the tweaks that we will have to make are much less than the tweaks last time. I can't wait for next time. And uh, as I said, we will continue to elevate our standards, and we hope everybody elevates their standards to meet the requirements to – Come and just put on the greatest show we could possibly put. I keep saying it. it the show, I mean, no matter what we do, in the end, the mm -hmm. performers make the show. And the yeah. performers here are the athletes. Mm. Bring it. Bring it. All right. All right. Thank luck. you very much. We're out. Take care.